Meth heads. Super scary, right? This is a DM I got. I'm a middle-aged woman living in Portland. As I think about self-defense, so many of the attacks and home invasions in Portland are done by somebody whacked out of their minds on meth or fentanyl or some other thing that numbs pain. So conventional self-defense tactics that cause pain probably are less effective. For outside my home, working in my yard, or walking around the neighborhood, what tool or weapon do you recommend? Thank you. I'm glad that this woman messaged me this because fear of crime is in a lot of ways more detrimental to society or people's health than actual crime. I know that sounds crazy. Obviously like getting killed is worse than being afraid of getting killed. But a lot of times I find people have like a misconception about the chances of this stuff happening. A whacked out meth head is a popular boogeyman and it's a, a common thing for people to be afraid of. But that's not really who's gonna attack you. It's most likely gonna be somebody that you know, probably someone that you know really well, and it's gonna be somebody that has given you indicators that they're probably gonna try to hurt you, either through their actions or through their words. That being said, I do understand the idea of a stranger jumping out of the bushes and grabbing you is scary and you wanna know what to do with that. Here's the thing about that, that idea, the notion of the meth head that feels no pain. First of all, conventional effective self-defense tactics don't require the offender to feel the pain or consent. Pain compliance is not a great way to defend yourself. Eli Knight, a good friend of mine and a guy I look up to in self-defense, kind of put pain compliance best. He doesn't like to use pain compliance unless the person's response to that pain is very predictable and he has an answer in the chamber for either the one or two things that they're gonna do. And I like that. Real self-defense techniques, real self-defense tools and weapons don't require the person to uh, agree that they're working. 100% the best self-defense tools and techniques is the ability to wrestle, the ability to fight hands, break the clinch, and prevent someone from taking you to the ground. That's the best tool, and that's whether or not it's a meth head, or your uh, cousin who's had too much to drink at a barbecue, or a boyfriend who has told you time and time again, <laughs> leverage is leverage, and it doesn't require the person to feel the pain. Now, as far as super strength, um, anecdotally, I can say that that is true. I'll tell a story about a guy who was like whacked out of his mind and took like eight of us to hold him down uh, in a second at the, end of the, at the end of the video. I'll tell you like a war story. But the ability to break the clinch, defend takedowns, fight hands, that sort of thing, that's universal. You need to know how to do that. And if you can't do that, any weapon or tool that I recommend to you, like a taser or even a gun or anything, and especially any kind of impact weapon, if you can't do those wrestling things, that's just a thing that once you introduce to the fight, he's gonna hold you down and take it from you and beat you with it. Speaking of grappling, technique-wise, strangles, like rear naked choke, guillotine choke, that's gonna be kind of the best way to end these confrontations because that doesn't require the person to feel pain if they're not getting blood to their brain they're not they're not hurting you beyond the tool of good grappling or wrestling ability or jiu-jitsu or whatever you want to use if i had to suggest a weapon uh obviously a firearm doesn't always require the person to know that it's working you know depending on shot placement and stuff like that but again without a lot of training a firearm can be just as much a liability as an asset uh, baton is totally out. If they're bigger, stronger, meaner, faster, more aggressive, and more willing to do violence, they're just going to take that thing from you and hit you with it. Pepper spray is probably on the, on the better end. If you're not going to be super well trained and you're not going to be just a physical phenom and be able to fight real good, pepper spray I think has the lowest barrier of entry to be useful is useful in the widest array of circumstances and also it doesn't come with that baggage of if you uh, use it when you're not supposed to. Obviously a firearm in many circumstances will be more effective and damaging than pepper spray. But if we have guy being a little too handsy and not taking no for an answer, gun is not appropriate. Guy talking shit, gun is not appropriate. Guy trying to kill you, gun is appropriate. Uh, with these two, uh, pepper spray would be all right, <laughs> probably. And with this one, maybe pepper spray wouldn't be as good as a firearm, but in many cases it would be, depending on your ability with each. Uh, but pepper spray would work uh, like through all that. 
it, you don't get in like a ton of trouble if you use pepper spray on, on like the wrong guy, whereas you do with a firearm. Calm down, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six crowd. That Understand what I am saying. I'm saying that a person who's not gonna be super up to speed on armed and unarmed combatives, who's not gonna take a bunch of courses in the legal side of things, and it's just like worried that a person's gonna fight her, if they pull out pepper spray and use that, it, it, it works pretty good, and it works for a wide array of circumstances. Pepper spray has a pain compliance component to it, but uh, properly applied, correctly formulated, oleoresin capsaicin spray, I think I said that right, causes things to swell shut. It's not just the pain. Like maybe he can fight his way through the pain, which it's like, that's the worst. By the way, if he's not a, a crack strong meth head whacked out of his mind who feels no pain, if he's not that, pepper spray is the worst. It's the worst, most painful thing ever. But even if he is, pepper spray has components to it that it doesn't, it doesn't require them to feel the pain. Once things start swelling shut, they'll start having trouble seeing and finding you to get their hands on you and get to you. The downside is cross-contamination and stuff like that if it does turn into a tussle. Uh, tasers are also a thing that don't really require pain compliance. The drive stun, which uh, is basically just pain compliance and a little bit of fear, that might not work on a uh, meth head, but the neuromuscular incapacitation, like if you get full lockup, if you get that per perfect deployment, that lockup doesn't require them to consent to it. Like they don't have to uh, agree that they are incapacitated. It's involuntary, but that's a, it requires that perfect lockup. It requires that perfect deployment of the two barbs. It has to work out exactly right. When the taser works successfully, it's like, boom, that was easy. But when it goes wrong, you're, you're left with, again, you know, your hands on a weapon that's not going to really work in these circumstances that you are scared of. Now, whether or not we should be scared of this meth head, you will hear these fantastical stories of, you know, uh, crack strong meth heads leaping from the bushes and, and dragging runners to their doom or running up in a random person's house and just being an unstoppable uh, hulk of a person. And those are, are good stories because people, they're sensational. Like, so they're gonna grab your attention and they're gonna be featured in media. But all the stories of cousins, uncles, brothers, boyfriends, husbands, wives, girlfriends, all that, those stories, when people read them or hear about them, they're not always as interesting and people tend to think that that can't happen to me. But those are the people that you need to worry about. If you have a uh, scumbag neighbor or family member that you continue to let be around you, that's who's probably going to try to hurt you. That's who's probably going to try to do crime to you. Most likely. Now as far as drug addicts being super strong, I can attest. That's true, that's happened to me. We got a call once and a guy said that people were in his house trying to shoot him and, and he was shooting back and we could hear gunfire in the background of the 911 call. And when we got there, the door was locked and we had to uh, force it open and kick it in and we got in there and it was we were trying to talk to him on the phone and we were telling him, hey, it's us, it's not the bad guys, it's us, come on out. And he wouldn't do it, he was screaming and carrying on. Turns out he was like in his, uh, underwear and he was sweaty and he was laying in bed by himself with an FN 5.7 just shooting up his whole bedroom. Bow, 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 bow. There was no one there. But when he jumped up off the bed to come, uh, he, he felt like we were bad guys and he, there was six or seven of us in the bedroom with him. He was laying on the bed and we were trying to talk to him. I realized he was in distress. I was the supervisor on duty and uh, so I was at the door and I had a bunch of six foot, six and a half foot titans on my shift. It was all guys bigger than me. All guys uh, over six feet, over 200 pounds, just a bunch of mountains of men and then me in the doorway. All five foot five of me. And at the time, probably about 140 pounds. That's where he wanted to go was the door, obviously. He jumps out of the bed in his underwear, soaked with sweat, wooga booga booga booga, and comes charging at me. He hits me. I go down underneath him. And uh, I'm yelling at the guys, like, don't, don't hurt him. Like, it's clear he was unarmed at that time. It was very obvious. He, he only had one weapon on him. And uh, it wasn't the 5'7". Uh, and I said, guys, guys, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Just let's, let's get him in the cuffs. 
and it took all however many and by that time there was more guys coming in six seven eight nine maybe even ten of us i don't know more guys than was useful and i remember it was i was trying to put his hand towards a cuff and there was like two or three other deputies hands getting in there and we all had the arm and we we're all trying to move it towards the other cuff and we couldn't and he was just like Grr! and he was so strong and if you looked at his physique he didn't look that strong um but he also wasn't really trying to hurt me uh that guy i'm, I'm not saying that meth heads are not dangerous understand what i'm saying i'm not saying that meth heads are not dangerous i'm just telling my experience with the super strength is real anyway his uh his heart ended up ex exploding uh, a few minutes later and he uh he didn't make it but um the point of the story was that yes it can make them super strong yes it can make them resilient to pain yes that could be a problem but the reality is that that's a, a remote possibility compared to the possibility that someone that you know or love or that loves you is going to do violence to you if any of those people do violence to you you're going to need the ability to wrestle fight hands break clinch and defend takedowns if you use a weapon, it's going to have to be one that doesn't, uh, that has a high percentage of success and doesn't require the person to acknowledge that it's working. Uh, pepper spray is great. Firearms are great with the appropriate training, both tactically and legally and mechanically, like how to use it and also when you should use it. Pepper spray is a little more forgiving in most of those areas, but without wrestling, any weapon that you bring to bear on a meth head or a really mean spouse uh, is just one more thing that they can take away from you and use against you. I don't do a ton of Q&As. I kind of took inspiration from Chewy over at Chew Jitsu. I really enjoy that format. I think when people ask questions that could benefit a lot of other people, it's important for us to answer them. I don't always love sharing war stories, but people have said that they enjoy that. So let me know down in the comments below if you appreciate the Q&A format. Or, uh, and if you want more fitness tips, self-defense techniques, gear reviews, as well as concepts and principles that make you hard to hurt, Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications.